Hispanic and Latino individuals in the United States represent a highly diverse population with respect to genetic ancestry, cultural practices, environmental exposures, and socioeconomic factors. This diversity is attributed to their widespread geographic origins within the Americas, combined with varied immigration patterns from other continents. The genetic makeup of many Hispanic individuals is characterized by admixture, predominantly from three continental ancestries, indigenous American, referred to as Amerindian, European, and African, reflecting the complex history. This complex admixture presents unique challenges in genetic association studies, particularly when trying to identify the genetic basis of phenotypic variation. Previous research has demonstrated that failing to account for this genetic diversity can lead to confounding in association studies, thereby reducing the accuracy of results. To improve the precision of detecting genetic risk factors, it is essential to consider both the genetic and non-genetic heterogeneity of U.S. Hispanic populations. To address the genetic diversity within these populations, this study employs a multidimensional clustering method to define genetic analysis groups, which aims to retain the cultural and environmental characteristics of self-identified background groups while achieving greater genetic homogeneity. These genetic analysis groups are used in GBUAS to control for variation among groups, thereby improving the power to detect genetic associations by reducing confounding from population structure, admixture, and relatedness. Moreover, this study introduces a linear, mixed model, LMM, approach that incorporates genetic analysis groups and principal components to control for familial relatedness and ancestry, respectively. This method has shown to reduce genomic inflation and improve the detection of trait associations in the cohort, offering a model that could be beneficial for other multi-ethnic studies involving admixture and relatedness. Almost all of the participants in the study identified themselves as Hispanic or Latino, and most also specified which country or region their family comes from. Out of the 12,803 people who provided genetic data, the largest groups identified as Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican, Central American, and South American. A small percentage, 3.1%, identified with more than one background or didn't specify. The locations where participants were recruited influenced these numbers. For example, almost all the Cuban participants were from Miami. Most Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, 67%, were from the Bronx in New York, and most Mexicans were from San Diego. Only 18% of participants were born in the U.S., excluding Puerto Rico. The study also asked participants where their parents and grandparents were from. Most of the grandparents were reported to be from Latin America, with smaller percentages from Europe the U.S. Most of the European grandparents came from Spain. The study looked at the mix of ancestral backgrounds in Hispanic participants, focusing on three main ancestral groups, Amerindian, indigenous peoples of the Americas, African, and European. The mix of these ancestries varied a lot depending on the participants' self-identified background. For example, people who identified as Mexican, Central American, or South American, generally had more Amerindian and less African ancestry. On the other hand, those who identified as Dominican or Puerto Rican had more African ancestry. Cubans, however, had more European ancestry than the other groups. These patterns match what other studies have found in Hispanic populations in the U.S. and in smaller studies from Latin American countries. However, it's important to remember that this study only included people from four U.S. cities, so their ancestry might not perfectly represent people from their countries of origin or the entire U.S. Hispanic population. Even within the same background group, like Mexicans, the amount of Amerindian ancestry varied depending on where the participants were recruited.
showing that there's a lot of diversity, even within specific Hispanic groups. The study examined the differences in ancestry proportions, Amerindian, European, and African, within six self-identified Hispanic groups, focusing on both the X chromosome and the autosomes. It was found that Amerindian ancestry was consistently higher on the X chromosome compared to the autosomes, while European ancestry was lower on the X chromosome. In Caribbean groups, such as Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, African ancestry was higher on the X chromosome. But in mainland groups like Mexicans and Central Americans, it was lower. These differences between the X chromosome and autosomes were significant. Additionally, the study analyzed the population structure by creating visual plots that showed how people from different background groups clustered based on their ancestry. The plot formed a triangle where each corner represented one of the three main ancestries, European, African, and Amerindian. Individuals with Caribbean backgrounds were more spread between European and African ancestry, while those with mainland backgrounds were spread between European and Amerindian ancestry. When looking at the first few principal components, PCs, which are statistical measures used to represent genetic differences, distinct differences were observed among the six groups. These differences became more pronounced as the proportion of European ancestry decreased. The genetic differences among people within a specific Hispanic or Latino background group are related to where their grandparents came from. For example, people whose grandparents are from Colombia and Venezuela tend to be more genetically similar to those from Central America than to those from other South American countries. When looking at people whose grandparents all came from the same country in Central or South America, the study found that these groups have clear genetic differences, which reflect the diversity of their origins. To keep the study manageable, the researchers grouped people into broad categories like Central or South American, rather than creating many small groups. The study also found that many participants were related to each other which makes sense since the study was community-based and involved people from the same households or neighborhoods. These relationships included parent-child pairs, siblings, and more distant relatives. The researchers identified a large group of participants who were not closely related to anyone else in the study, which helped them analyze genetic data more accurately. To make sure that the genetic differences they observed weren't just due to people being related, the researchers used specific statistical methods. They found that using just the first few measures of genetic differences, called principal components, or PCs, was enough to account for the major differences in ancestry among the groups. Adding more PCs didn't provide much extra benefit in understanding the genetic differences. The researchers created genetic analysis groups based on both genetic data and the background groups people identified with. These groups were designed to be more genetically similar within each group and to include everyone in the study, even those who didn't identify with a specific background. By doing this, they made sure that the groups were more accurate for genetic studies and avoided the problems that can arise when someone's genetic background doesn't match their self-identified group. The analysis showed that people who identified as other or with multiple backgrounds were not outliers and fit into the overall genetic patterns of the study participants. By examining the genetic data in detail, the researchers showed that people who identify as Mexican but don't fit into the Mexican genetic analysis group are often outliers in genetic comparisons. This pattern was seen in other groups as well. In summary, we can say there are differences in continental ancestry proportions between Caribbean and mainland Hispanic and Latino populations, reflecting their colonization history. There is genetic heterogeneity associated with geographic locations in Latin America within Amerindian genomic segments. The proportion of genetic ancestry derived from European, African, and Amerindian regions 
varies substantially among and within ethnic groups from different countries in Latin America and in U.S. Hispanic and Latino populations. This study show how diverse the Hispanic and Latino community is in reality, while looking homogeneous from outside. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.